those types of mistakes don't scale well when the teams you play get better and better. So that's yep. the one thing I worry about. Right, here's the key thing, because obviously it was just the BO1s. When we talk about Vitality and G2, that we'll do now, we'll start with Vitality, right? Me and Dom understandably Duff might have talked these topics to death because these are the main teams we talk about every single week. So I think we'll make it mainly tailored more about what you want to talk about on this one. So I'll just start with this. All I'll say is this. I know Vitality lost a bunch of games the last couple of weeks. I know they had the odd game that looked sus. I'm just going to remind people of something that no one else seems to care about, apparently. Not only is this like a round robin of BO1s, They've just changed one of the fundamental players in their team. Like, G2's had the same lineup the entire year. Like, like why are we acting like you're never allowed to ever show any weakness? Because what people are doing is this. Because we've hyped that they could be the best, and especially on the show, we always hype perks and fucking upset and bore. People want to make it, like, because they're not G2, they're trash. It's like, if they're not G2, they're not G2 by that much. And spoiler I love it when you guys do this. I fucking love when you literally let me buy law on people that the eye test tells you were a slam dunk are going to be really good. Like, if people don't know, there's been some crazy ones like this in Counter-Strike. Like, people actually, for real, let me pick the players that have become, like, the GOAT players. Because instead, they just took the guy who at the time was the best. Like, but he'll always be the best because the stats. And then it was just like, I mean, I'm watching the game. This guy's fucking impossibly good. Like, I think I'll take him. Like, you moron. Like, five years later, like... And the greatest player of all time going into the Hall of Fame is like, mate, why do you guys let me do this? You let me and Dom do it two years ago on fucking Perks on Cloud9. Why you choose to bail on the most obvious slam dunk players of all time? I'll never hey, get you it. Let you, us you guys, with upset for two Jan years. Jan here as well, mate. You guys did. Yeah, no, upset last year was the same thing as yeah. well, Duff, man. They all told me Flackhead's better than him. I was like, you know what? <laughs> First of all, I'll take that bet all day long. Tell me what odds. And then two, I think it, it's not, I don't even, I almost feel like I'm stealing candy from a baby, even taking your money in that scenario. Like, you fool. Why are you picking him? Like, so what's your take on the vitality roster? Because the key thing is, I'll totally acknowledge all the flaws I've had. They even had, sadly, in this split, the odd ball game that was even bad. That that yeah. hurts me inside. I want him to be the best. <laughs> but the problem is, I find it so easy to look past the problems, Duff, man. Are you seeing something fundamental I'm not? Is there something actually like that's actually flawed about this team you're concerned about? I mean, the only flaw just comes down to like how they coordinate later in the game when things get hectic, I think. Other than that, they have three really strong lanes. I think they have a mid laner who is really willing to just give up himself to get his side laners ahead. And I think, yeah, they can just carry games. I think they're a really scary team to play against because you do have to worry about upset. Like the whole game is going to revolve around upset at some point, but you can't ignore top lane, which I think was the thing that Fnatic had last year where they had upset. And they had humanoid, but you only really needed to worry about both side of the map. Yes. Wonder wasn't going to like completely flip the game and carry it. So now Vitality has a roster where now they have Bow, they have Photon, they have Upset, who are just all really able to just carry games on their back. And I think Perks can do that if he needs to. I think he's kind of of he looks like he's of the mindset where he doesn't need to be that guy yeah. right now. I think ever since even last summer, he turned more towards like the Niski sort of play style of of making his teammates better rather than just focusing on himself. I think they're a legitimately good team. It's just it's just whether they have a hangover from making that change so late that they don't get to work on playing around upset properly. Like it won't be natural going from neon kaiser to upset kaiser for example so maybe when it gets to playoffs and the pressure comes maybe there's some mistakes there but i, I don't see it i think they have too much experience there i think it's i think they're just a good team any concerns Tom? i mean i'm not concerned about any of the teams that i thought were good that you know have, have performed the way that they've that they performed right g2 and vitality i thought they were going to be the best teams coming into the split they both ended six and three they both had like good good records i mean they got into the the top tier of, of the bracket and bo1s and they 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 look like they would just be teams that that you know they they should i mean there are causes for concerns there are games where it's like oh they're not playing well around the things they could do. They can't play all these champions, but there's so like, if there's so many games where you could just look at and be like, okay, this guy just had an awful game and, and they lost like the perks Gragas game. Like he just played a fucking terrible yeah. Gragas mid game, right? That was like, the he's, worst just, he's, he's the worst Gragas I've ever seen in my life, bro. I was better at that champion in season five than he is now. It's ridiculous. I can't believe what I'm watching. So 
his Grog is, is, is terrible. You don't have to play Grogus, right? Everyone goes through the phase where they try to play Grogus. We saw every team attempt this. Koi tried to play the Grogus. You know, Abadage played played the Grogus. Uh, Nuck played a game of the Grogus and was just absolutely fucking useless. Everyone goes through this phase where they're like, but Faker's playing it. Let me try to... I, oh, it looks so OP if I could do the... And then they just can't do the combo. And, you know, all right, well, now we just have, have a useless champion mid. Like, that game was, was a slam dunk versus, versus BDS. Obviously... People are going to be like, but BDS threw... This is the, the response that I get, so I'm just going to cover right now. Come BDS on. threw their game, so Vitality throwing their games. Like, that was the that was the difference between being first and second, by the way. Yes. For, yes. for Vitality, right? I mean, when you look at BDS games, BDS does are way more prone to throwing games than Vitality when they're mega winning. Obviously, in close games, I think that Vitality does have some issues. Like, their communication clearly is not good. They seem like they're all kind of like shouting over each other whenever there's a voice comm clip released but the players know how to carry their leads and know how to win important games like perks yeah. upset these guys know how to fucking win uh games that matter and if they have different comps they're, they're definitely going to win i mean part of the reason they, lo they lose this bds game is because number one they don't execute on their their champions well right the grogus game w w was terrible but also they're running a renekton grogus Lee Sin, or no, uh, yeah, Renekton, uh, Gragas Lee Sin, I think was their top side, which is just like that is one of the worst scaling top sides you can ever draft. And as playoffs comes in, people will be just drafting more scaling. It happens pretty much every single split in LEC, unless your name is G2, where you just stomp the fucking game and it doesn't matter like what, what you end up drafting because you're so far ahead of everyone else. So Vitality and G2, they obviously looked weaker than what you'd expect, but. I don't care that much about these these BO1s, which is the same reason why I'm not willing to just say, even though Koi's looked significantly worse than BDS, like like BDS played nine winnable games, Koi played six games they should have lost, and then three games that they won didn't even look that amazing. They won it off playing this like Rakan, you know, Rakan, Lee Sin, TF, whatever, like roaming strategy that they randomly did in, in, in the second week here. I just don't care that much about that. I think that the teams that they, they looked good enough to me in the games they won. Vitality looked good enough to me in the games they won, where I think that I would rather see them go to MSI than any of these other uh, teams that could qualify. Like Mad Lions, that, this is the fear for everyone, bro. If Mad Lions makes it out of that group, that is the fucking issue. If Mad Lions somehow gets second in their their uh, the BO3 group, the group A, which could happen, right? Like it's yep, a Strahlis awesome. fanatic. Yep. Mad could be better than Astralis and Fnatic. Yep. I know I know Astralis has looked significantly better. It's the same thing with Koi. These teams that have been good before that have the battle-tested players that know how to win best of series. I don't think you ever count them out, right? If Mad make it, then Vitality could get second and not make MSI, right? If Mad make it to best yep. of fives, they're almost guaranteed qualified unless G2 loses. So it's, it's a little bit scary. Um, but I think that they're just a team where, like, like Duffman said, you have good enough laners everywhere that that's the team that you want to represent because they can, th that's the, that's the requirement in order to play internationally. You have to be yeah. able to get through the lane phase versus these really insane Asian players. I think that these players can actually do it. You know, I mean, we saw upset literally do it at the last worlds perks is a question mark, but I think that mid lane, especially if he's playing like his matchups that he knows in and out, if he's playing a mage matchup, he's not going to get like completely shit on by somebody. And then photon looks super legit. So I would love to see this team, uh, continue playing I, I hope to see them them actually make it to, to msi because i just don't trust any of the other teams like if they don't make it to msi look at the other teams you have to choose from astralis bds which obviously look good now but for the same reason you think that they're going to fall off here you don't want to see them internationally sk they're the same bds astralis basket for me where i just don't think they have like the firepower on their teams to be able to compete and then you have Fnatic. don't have to say anything about that i don't think <laughs> and then koi mad lions who are looking like shit now but they have the players that's who you have to choose from so let's see can you, can you even imagine if lec sends to msi fucking astralis and then all like you know faker and team water coming in like knight and jdg walk in the room you know all these cracked out teams walk in and then they're like oh they're like looking up on opg who the fuck's 113 and fucking leader like <laughs> what is this guy's champion pool like and even better they're gonna just meet young hoon like he's gonna be like you know like and you ask you you speak Korean. Like, who the fuck are you? Like, man, no, the, the whole thing would be so hilarious. If you need. At least yeah. some of them might be like, oh, copy. I think I saw you a few years ago. Now. What you been up to? All right. Okay. okay whatever. They'll probably just assume that Young Hoon is like super insane. They'll be like, oh, I guess yeah. this Korean guy, I guess he just carried the team here, you know? Like, probably.
And by the way, as an aside as well, the last thing I'll say on the Vitality one is this. The other reason why it's so easy to double down on this particular one is because the three teams they lost to guys are the three teams above them in the tables, all the really good teams. And as Dom said, almost all those games were winnable. Even the G2 one was a fucking cracked out banger that I'm pretty sure everyone yeah. loved as long as you were in the two teams. Like, that was a really awesome game of League of Legends. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.